everybody welcome to another video this one is the NS Iwata Kaiwami 4WB so I did a um, an intro video that originally I was going to put at the start of all these videos but what I'm going to do is I'll just put a link in the description and it runs through the difference it's actually of the wider 4L but it runs through the difference of the WBX, the WB, the standard Kaiwami 4, and in that particular case, the wider 4L. So it will run through the differences, and it's about five minutes long at the start. So if you want to see that, go over to there, and then it saves me putting it at the start of this, because otherwise I'm just showing people the same thing over and over again, which I didn't think was, was right, really. So if you want to know a bit more about the differences between the Kaiwami 4s, go over... So have a look on that link on in the description and um, that will take to sort it, sort it out. It'll also, I'll put a link in the description uh, for a, a review I did on the W400 WB1. Because this Kaiwami 4, as far as I know, only comes with a WB2 cap. Now the caps aren't interchangeable, but the actual working parts of the cap, i.e. the air horns, etc., et are the same. So, if you want to know what a WB1 cap runs like, again, have a look in the description. The link's there, and I'll exp I explain a few differences there. So, having got all that out of the way, we'll concentrate on this. So, this is the WB2 version. Now, one of the drawbacks with this immediately is it actually uses quite a lot of air. It uses 390 litres a minute, which is about 14 and a half CFM something like that uh, I haven't looked it up but it's around about that so it's quite a lot of air so if you're thinking of getting one of these for at home you need a good air supply really because otherwise it's not going to keep up with it the output of these also isn't particularly great uh, and when I say great I don't mean the quality of the output I mean the amount of material that these things put out it's not actually a lot uh, I mean I was a quote at 1.8 bar which is the specified um, pressure that you use it at they quote 160 millilitres a minute uh, BA uh, sorry BA the WB1 cap puts out 140 millilitres a minute so you can see that the, the WB2 cap does put out more material but it's still not a lot you compare that to the standard Kaiwami 4 the one with the brown cap, BA4J cap, that puts out 220 millilitres a minute and it also uses significantly less air, 270 litres a minute, which is about 8 CFM I think, according to Iwata. And that's at 2 bar, at a higher uh, pressure. So these things are really made for the, 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 the people or chaps that have got good air supply. So, having said that, they are actually a very, very good gun. Uh, it atomizes finer than the standard Kaiwami 4, the one with the brown cap. It, 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 due to that split nozzle, and again, if you look in the other video, you'll see the differences in the split nozzle, etc. Because of that split nozzle, it does atomize finer. Now, it atomizes finer for base coat and for clear coat. And I can see why it gets its WB designation because I've been experimenting with some uh, solvent based coats but also some water based coats with this gun. And you do spray water, well, I, I find that you need to spray water slightly differently. And because of this split nozzle, it does atomize finer. And I think that actually makes itself tell more on waterborne paint. So I think it's a really good waterborne paint gun, but it's equally at home with solvent. But it's it's just that compared to the standard Kaiwami 4, uh, which handles solvent very well and doesn't handle water-based as well, this handles water-based very, very well. So it's a good water-based um, gun. I've put metallic through it. I've done pearls through it. I've done quite a bit for it. I've had it for five months now before I uh, bring this video to you now. Uh, and so I've put most things through it, including clear coat. And when we get to the end of the video, you'll see me using it on our test panel for uh, clear coat. But 
it's handled everything really, really well. The, as I say, the only downside really for me is the amount of air it uses. It does use quite a lot of air. I used it at 1.8 bar, which is what's recommended, and I really didn't need to deviate from that. It's quite slow. All these split tip guns are, as I say all, uh, most of these split tip guns are quite slow, uh, and this is no exception really. So, so it's purely it's purely for atomization. This isn't going to be a fast gun that's you know using a lot of air throwing it out it's just not not going to happen you can turn the pressure up you know to two bar or 2.1 bar but although that increases the fluid flow slightly uh or in case of clear coat a reasonable amount i found that it it, it started to make it dry it's just too much air for the amount of fluid that the tip can pass if that makes sense this is actually a 1.4, so in theory it's a bit faster than the uh, the 1.3 would be. But you know, I, I really found it perfectly usable the way it is, although it's not particularly fast. So if you're after a fast clear coat gun, and we're doing clear coat now in the video, then it's really not for you. But I found it handled everything else well. Another thing I must say is that I did get a problem with one of my Kawami 4s uh, and I'll put a link in the description again so that you can see what happened there it was just an air leak but you should be aware most of these things come from Japan because it seems to be the only place they're available at the moment I got this from Painting Tools Japan they've given me good service I do buy them I'm not sponsored mm -hmm. or anything so I do buy them but they've given me good service so I will mention them uh, and as I say, if, if you're buying this stuff from Japan, or I'm about to say, if you're buying this stuff from Japan, it is buyer beware, because I'm sure if I had a problem with one that I bought from them, I would be looked after, but it would be down to me sh to ship it back, and, you know, it could be expensive, because you want it insured, etc. So, just be, be aware that if you are buying these things from Japan, and something does go wrong, it's rare, I admit it's rare, but, you know, it could happen, just just you know beware really uh is all i'm trying to say so a highly recommended gun if you don't mind the price difference it's around about twice the price of the standard uh brown tips ba4j cap kawami 4 and you're not after a fast gun highly recommended as i say it handled all the stuff i put through it including clear coat and i actually think they make a really good clear coat gun benefits from a better quality clear coat one that you can put less material on and still get a nice flow so some of the cheaper ones that i use you need to put a lot on uh to get a a, a good finish you know a good uh pill and um, i was gonna say pill free pill pill less less pill finish uh whereas with the better quality clear coats that flow out better this would suit that more because you're not relying on the amount of material. You're relying, of get, relying on getting an even spread of material out, in this case clear coat, uh, and then that flowing to give you a nice flat finish. So, yeah, highly recommend it. You can see this, a really, really good finish. A great gun, really nice to use. Uh, yeah, I thoroughly, I thoroughly enjoy using it. Anyway, guys, thanks for watching the videos as always. Um, I'll keep them coming if you keep watching them. And if you are enjoying the videos, think about giving us a subscription because it does help the channel grow and then more people see them. All right, guys, thanks very much. Bye-bye.